Howdy folks. I've got a Model S in here that I'm doing a rotor coolant delete on and I had promised that I would do an addendum to show how to check the rotor encoder sensor aka speed sensor uh, for Model S and Model X and uh, so that's what I'm going to do here real quick is show how to actually check the encoder sensor. It's relatively simple not quite as easy as it, as it is on the RAV4 and the B-Class. Uh, you don't actually have to have a lift to do it, um, but you do have to get have enough clearance to be able to get this bottom panel off and be able to crawl under the car. So I would say at a minimum, probably a set of ramps would be required. Um, and then of course you need all of your tools to get this panel off. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so I can see right off the bat here that we have a little bit of missing hardware and some mismatched stuff. Uh, we're missing a screw here and for some reason there are screws or rather clips instead of screws over here on this fin on the side. Uh, but that's no big deal. We can take care of that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all the clips. Um, normally there should just be two on each side on these fins. Although in this particular case I actually have four on just this one side. So Go ahead and pull all those out real quick. While I'm at it, I'm also going to pull out the clips that are up here at the at the kind of the front side of the tire where the fender well comes around. It's not totally necessary to do just an encoder sensor check, but I'm actually going to be dropping the subframe and everything on this to install rotor coolant delete. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off too. Alrighty, so all of the clips are off. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning that if you go to the refresh Model S starting in mid-2016, as well as Model X, they're a little bit different here underneath. There's not quite so many clips, and you don't have all these separate fin pieces on those. Um, so it's actually a little bit easier to pull the panel off on, on the newer ones. Uh, but the process is overall mostly the same. Uh, but anyway, we have a whole bunch of different screws that are all 10 millimeter head. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take those off. Alrighty, I have all of the screws removed except for these two at the very ends. Um, so I'll go ahead and take those out as well. And there's those out. So the way that I like to do this, I actually leave the screws in here on the front edge of these long fins and leave them clipped into this piece. That way all of the screws are out, but it's still attached. Um, and if I just kind of bend these towards the outside, they'll unclip from the bottom side of the bumper here. And then we can just pull this down around the cloth fender liners. And now it's just hanging here. Now if you're looking to just do an encoder sensor check, you can do it just like this. Um, on these earlier model cars, it can be a little bit difficult to remove the whole piece. You actually have to take the shear plates off on the front of the subframe. Uh, but you don't actually have to remove the whole thing to get to the encoder sensor. Um, so you could check it just like this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the shear plates the rest of the way and actually get this out of my way since I have to do that anyways. So the shear plates are held in with three screws that all have T25 heads and then they're actually attached to the subframe bolt with a 15 uh, millimeter hex. Not. And now I can just grab these shear plates and kind of give them a wiggle while pulling back and remove them. Like I said, not necessary if you're just doing a speed sensor check, but if you want extra access or clearance, sometimes it's necessary depending on the exact spec of the car. All right, so now we can actually remove this whole panel. Just like so. And now we'll get you in to see the encoder sensor. All righty, so we're over here on the driver's side of the drive unit and right up in here is the encoder sensor. So it's just this black sensor right here. And that's what we're gonna remove to check for coolant intrusion. 
Uh, this one has actually been previously checked, and I think whoever checked it last, uh, which supposedly was at the Tesla Service Center, your mileage may vary on whether or not you can actually get them to do that inspection, but some of them will. Uh, but I think that they cleaned the sensor off when they checked it, so I probably won't actually see anything on here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and pull that out and take a look at it. So first things first, we've got to unplug it. So there's just a little tab on the top side of the connector here. My hand's probably blocking the way there, but there's just a little tab that you pull on to unlatch it. And then we just have to push the connector towards the back and get that unplugged. I'll just kind of push the connector out of the way a little bit. Excuse the noise, my neighbor's got his forklift going out there. And then we need to remove this bolt right here that holds the sensor in. So the only way to really do that is with a, with a ratcheting wrench, or I guess just a regular wrench too would work, but it'd be a bit slower. But we'll just stick that right on there and loosen that bolt off. And there we go, so now we're ready to remove it. I'm just gonna take, you can take a flathead screwdriver or a clip tool or whatever, we just need to pry it out just a little bit. So that we can get a grip on it. So now it's loose, and then we can just pull it out of there. There it is. So right there we've got the encoder sensor and it is pretty clean. It looks like they probably wiped it off. Normally I would expect to see you know, a little bit of grease on here or something at, at the very minimum. Uh, but they must have cleaned it when they had it out. So uh, if you want to know what to look for uh, when you do check this, you're looking for either droplets of coolant, which will be blue in color. Sometimes you can't really tell that it's blue just because they're, you know, little tiny droplets, but it's a blue colored coolant. Or if you see any kind of crustiness, uh, either like white, uh, white crustiness that's usually kind of solidified and dried up coolant or if you see uh, brown crustiness that's a sign of rust um, so the, the rust is kind of the worst case scenario that's what you really don't want to see um, but yeah that's all that it really takes to, to check this thing is just pull that bottom cover off and unbolt it and then uh, if you do see coolant or uh, corrosion present then you really want to address the problem before it destroys your drive unit. So anyways, that's it for that. Uh, if you want to see a little bit more on the inspection process and what problems to look for on the large drive unit, you can check out the other video that I did on, uh, on the Mercedes B-Class, uh, which is basically the same drive unit as this. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.